15% of the world's population experience some form of disability and disability prevalence is higher for developing countries. One-fifth of the estimated global total, or between 110 million and 190 million people, experience significant disabilities. There are 445,006 people with disabilities registered in Malaysia as of 2012. However, as registration is voluntary, it is not reflective of the real numbers in the country. We left for Ampang at 6.30 a.m. to avoid traffic. For our documentary, we chose the Special Children Society of Ampang to create an awareness to the public about disabled children, to show that they are just like any normal people, to give love and affection to them. Just like any ordinary school in Malaysia, they also start with a morning assembly. We were divided into groups to assist the teachers in every classes. Just like us, they can do colouring, play games, do maths and cook. They also have break time like regular school. We managed to interview Miss Christine Wong, President of Special Children Society of Ampang. I have a daughter born with Down syndrome. When my daughter was six, I got a letter to send her for assessment. At the assessment, she was asked to build up blocks. And then after that, the, 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 the assessment teacher gave her another set and asked her to redo again. She was very angry to have to, have to do it again. She just pushed the block down. And then they said, oh, if a child is like this, we cannot accept the child. So I felt that it was very unfair. I felt that like, uh, other children, because you are normal, you can go to Center 1. And then you, we don't have to assess, you don't have to go to any assessment, you just go to get to Center 1. But our special children have to go to this assessment before they accept them to the special class. I and two other parents decided that we would start a little play group. And this little play group uh, was like, one day was in your house, one day was in my house, one day was somebody else's house. So end up it's really work out. So I said, okay, what shall I do? Then a friend says to me, uh, how about we just get a little group? So I did that, I rented a house in Bandar Baru Ampang. That's how we started. Uh, going back 18 years ago, I never expected the school to be as what it is today. Uh, I, I got a letter from Kabajika to say that this small little place you rented is not suitable. And then one day this lady, she said to me, her name is Maria Kara, she's Greek. Yeah? And she said to me, what do you want? So I said, uh, I said, I wish I have a own place for the, for the children. With her help, uh, we managed to raise half a million. So we have all these people that are very supportive of what, uh, our, what we are doing. So actually I just started off because my daughter has no place to go. And now it is uh, benefiting a lot of other children. So For me, I think achievement is when I see a child has progressed. I think the, the sooner and the younger the children come in, there's a room for a lot of improvement. And of, of course, we have very challenging children with behaviours. I don't think the government school uh, can, can handle if a child is violent or the child hits themselves. We try to work with a professional to see how we can overcome this kind of behaviour. So with our teachers also, the training is ongoing. And we have six classes here and then I have two classes of early intervention. The, the children here are four to six. The early intervention, also we have two groups. One is high functioning, which we think that they will be able to go to the government schools. Then we have another group that's very, very disabled. Uh, they drool, they cannot talk, they are uh, very dependent on the teachers. So we do a lot of um, oral motor therapy for them so that they stop drooling. And we also do a lot of physical therapy for them so that they get stronger. Then we have another group of children from age 7 onwards. And uh, these are the children that couldn't go into the government school. For. This group of children also we divide into high functioning and low functioning. A high functioning one would go into mathematics, language, computer, they go swimming, they go bowling, they do everything. We have another group uh, in within that category that's also a little bit on the violent side, behaviour, a very challenging behaviour and that they are in another class. 
then uh, our, then the, our top range of children from 18 onwards are going up we also have two groups that one we have the daisy class which you I think you've seen and that, that group of children is very high functioning uh, we have actually even uh, take them out to shop and actually try to get work for them so uh, I've taken them out to the lake uh, Titi Wangsa and I was holding this boy and this uh, another parent in the park shouted at me and said uh, if your child cannot behave himself, you shouldn't bring him out here. When he, he said that, I said, okay, that's something for me to learn. So I apologized and then I said, well, maybe I should let all our children wear a t-shirt with the name uh, <coughs> Special Children's Society of Ampang. So now with that, even they look very normal, when, when they do something irregular, people will say, oh, this is a special child, you know. Uh, so that's how we also learn from uh, experiences that we, we went through. La. Some children who are Forever, we, the parents have to accept that they are forever going to be very dependent on adults. I feel like it's very unfair that uh, normal children have access to so much, but our children don't have it. I think that uh, there should be a lot of awareness that this kind of children exist. They should give them more opportunity to go into regular school, like inclusive education. I think inclusive education is very important when the child is very young. Like, uh, I put my daughter in a Good Shepherd uh, kindergarten those days and she was uh, age four and she was with regular children and she took part with the sports and, and all that and I thought the children were very kind to her but it didn't start off kindly, you know, they would say uh, Ana Chacha, Monye, they would go like that and uh, that was the first two weeks of school and by the third week I saw a, a change in the children when, when my daughter came to school they all ran to her, help her with the bag and I saw a real change and I asked the principal what happened and then the principal was, she said, I taught the children about handicap. So I think it's very good to have inclusion because at this young age, this is the first time that this regular children are seeing a disabled child and the, they, were, the, they were taught that you will never know in the future what kind of children you will have. We also managed to interview one of the teachers. My name is Asima Rani. Uh, they call me Teacher Shima here. I teach the older students between ages 15 to 38. They are more independent. They can, you know, they can uh, do a lot of things. They can do uh, self-help, living skill activities, gross uh, motor and all. teaching in this school for about five years. I also have an autistic son and I find it a challenge to teach him so the reason being I I, I want to learn more new things you know, in order to to be able to understand my son better and teach him. And also, I, I like working with uh, special children. As a token of appreciation for having us, we decided to give the children pencil cases and snacks to bring home. We also made origamis to give the teachers for their kind gratitude and for their dedication. Every hello ends with a goodbye. By 12 noon, school ended for the day. Some of the students went home by transportation provided by the organization while some were picked up by their parents or guardian. By 12.30 p.m., we headed back home to college, and that marks the end of our venture. I've learned that when it comes to helping others, always do it with a sincere heart and not because of expecting something in return. Set aside your ego and go make the world a better place. It took a lot of courage, patience and kindness to get along with them. Whenever we took part in joining the activities, 
a realization hits me that the sincere smiles and happiness that they displayed really warmed my heart. It only took a simple act of kindness from them that were able to make my day. Personally, I felt guilty as when I meet people with special needs, I'll be scared. But when I met them, I realized that I'm totally wrong and this activity proved to me that I should change my perception. So, we as human beings should treat them equally without discriminating them. Patience is really important while teaching kids with autistic spectrum or hyperactive disorder. Much time is needed for the children to learn. Personally, I really admire the teachers because they were really passionate about their job and they also repeated the same thing over and over until the children understand whatever they thought. I feel grateful to be born this way. I learned a lot when I was there that these people are just like regular people and we should include them in our society. When I was there, I really felt the love from them. Just because they were born with broken wings, it doesn't mean we should treat them differently. Visiting them was really eye-opening, as we should not look down at special people. They are also capable of doing anything just like any ordinary human being. All we have to do is acknowledge their abilities and give them confidence. When we visited them, they were so happy. Why can't us, people who are able to do things without help, are unhappy? This can teach us to be grateful with what we have. I hope this is, the society will be able to help more special children, um, um, make them more independent and able eventually to, to work in the outside world. If, but for those who, can't, who are not able to work, make them more um, independent and more confident to, to face uh, the, the society at large. The message I really want to, to give people is that I include them. Include them in their lives. I mean, if you see like uh, them shopping or you see them uh, eating in the restaurant, don't stare at them or don't make comments or don't say like, if your child is cannot behave, you don't bring him here because this is. I think they have every right to be in a restaurant or in a park as your child just because this child is disabled. When you when somebody makes a remark like that, it's very unfair. I feel. I feel that we all should share the space and share the environment. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.